In this video, I head to the coast to take on a brand new 15 minute photo challenge. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today, I've come down to Salt Dean to do another 15-minute photo challenge. Well, today I've come down to the coast here, and I, I'm starting here with these little beach huts, but um, just, just a second, just a second. Sorry, couldn't miss that one. Cyclist going across in front. Absolutely brilliant, what a great start. So yeah, and that's pretty good. Let's see if we can go closer and find some more interesting patterns or textures within those. Time's ticking, let's get going. It's rusty, it's weathered, it's got to be a good picture in here somewhere. Uh, as far as the camera goes, today I'm using my Canon 60D, and the reason I'm using that is because I just love this flippy, foldy screen, and I hope to get some use out of that later with some unusual angles. And the lens I've randomly chosen for this 15 minute photo challenge is my Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter lens, really wide angle lens. Not really ideal for this, but uh, well, let's give it a whirl, let's see what we can find. I love the rust, let's get a picture of that. One thing I like to do is take a picture in landscape format, but then turn the camera over and just take another one in portrait format. You'd be amazed at how it can look different between the two different formats. So I've come down onto the beach. We're going to do some, uh, well, a couple of pictures on the beach. You've got to, haven't you? But as I'm walking down, I'm looking at the side here and there's some great textures. The sky today is uh, blank. It's sea mist kind of rolling in. It's, it's not a great sky, so texture pictures could come in really handy. I can superimpose them over the top and on that blank sky. It may just give me some interest. So let's see what I can find really quickly. Uh, I'm going to pop my aperture back to f11 for a fair depth of field, but a, a reasonably good shutter speed. And this is actually slightly curving as well, so f11 might just help with the depth of field there too. And we'll just bag a couple of these really quickly. Uh, when it comes to textures, you actually want stuff that's actually really quite smooth. Whenever I used to, to photograph textures originally, I went for stuff that was really grainy, really gritty. But when you overlay them on your pictures, you actually want stuff that almost looks flat to the eye now, because it really does look more emphasized in the final shot. Okay, that'll do nicely. Let's get down onto the beach. Ah, the seaside. Fantastic. This is why I've got my, uh, my Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter lens. It, it's, it's for a shot like this. It has to be. So let's just see what we get here. That works really well. I'm happy with that. But I know in my camera bag, I've got a neutral density filter and a tripod just, well, you can't see it, it's next to the video camera. So uh, hang on. I'm going to get rid of the black rapid strap. Not permanently, just for a moment and I'm going to swap over to a tripod. One moment. Right, okay, so here we go. This is my Vanguard 283 carbon fibre tripod. Um, I wonder how carbon fibre and salt water react. Well, <laughs> we'll find out in a moment. Let's just uh, pop this down and we'll make sure it's really securely in. Then for my neutral density, it is my Hoya ND400 neutral density filter. Now you've seen me use this before in a video which we did in, in Haysborough. So you can go back and have a, a watch of that for more information on how I use a neutral density filter. And there it goes. Okay, so that's giving me what, about a, a 13 second exposure it says. So that's quite a long exposure. It's not, not huge, but it should be enough just to smooth out the ripples in the surface of this water. Okay. Okay, so, um, actually I'll tell you what, we'll leave it on the tripod. Let's go and see if we can find some more photographs that would be tripod friendly. What a brilliant thing, just sticking out here in the middle of the, uh, the beach. Um, let's get a photograph. 
Uh, probably don't need the camera, f uh, the tripod for this, but do need the camera. Uh, let's just, let's take a bad photograph and let's see if we can work the scene and get a better shot. So straight ahead. Oh, it's not, it's not a bad picture. It's, it's certainly with the, the 10 millimeter lens, it, it does disappear to nothing. I think there's a, a better shot. Let's keep going up along the end here. Okay, so I've come right up to the end now and it may look like I'm really close, but one of the great things about the 10 to 20 millimeter lens is how it just changes the perspective. From here, it's not, it's not a brilliant picture. It's still well, five foot six off the ground, isn't it? So let's get down a little bit lower. Let's use that flippy out screen that I've got and I'm gonna go right down low. We'll lose the tripod for now. We may come back to that. And let's go right in nice and low, turn the live view on And I can put my camera right in the middle, frame up my shot. The perspective is completely different. It's an utterly different viewpoint, but I need something in the foreground. Um, let's grab some stones, pebbles. Hang on. Look at that. <laughs> you don't have to go far, do you? That'll do. Just something like that. Hang on. That's a... Uh, one, two, three, four, must have odd numbers, five. There we go, just one of those little things. Odd numbers work well. So let's come down here, find the stones. There they are. So let's make use of the tripod. Let's pop that down because the sky is looking a bit it's a bit washed out. There's, there's starting to be some detail in the sky and I'd like to record that. So what I'm going to do is uh, go into my auto exposure bracketing. So just dive into the menu, find AEB and we'll dial in. I'm going to go for three stops either apart. So uh, zero minus three plus three, three photographs in total. Put the drive into self timer two second self timer and it'll take all three shots simultaneously only one press of the button right we'll frame this up one two three look at that brilliant you know what this is missing it's missing the human element it needs something at the end um right let's put this onto self timer 10 seconds there we go. And I'm going to run into the shot. Okay, so here we go. Go, go, go. One, two, three, four. Actually, I didn't start at zero. It could be anything, couldn't it? There it goes, I heard it. <laughs> Let's have a little look. That looks pretty good. Let's just do one more. Let's go once more. And we're going to really stop the aperture down, I think. F22 for maximum depth of field. Oh, goodness, time's running out. OK, OK, OK. And I'm going, to, I'm going to look off into the distance, wistfully, I think, looking off at the white cliffs of Sussex. Brilliant. OK, have we got... We're really, really, really short of time, but I've just seen... Oh, I've got a photograph of that. Hang on, let's just get this off. And uh, let's just hop over. Fence. <laughs> it's a rusty beaten up coke can only photographers would think this is actually a piece of art it's beautiful if i had my canon 24105 i could probably stand this up on something and do a nice shallow depth of field um i don't think it's going to work here but well, let's, give, let's give it a whirl what have i got to lose one photograph it's worth a try isn't it so let's use the flipping out screen once more We'll put it into live view mode. We'll put it right down here. And there we go. Nailed it, brilliant. Fantastic, okay, so let's get my favorite picture into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how I do the editing on my favorite picture right now. Why did I say favorite image? I took loads of images that I love in that 15 minute challenge, but I'm gonna show you how I processed this one.
So this is right back at the beginning. It's the grab shot right at the start of the challenge. And because it was a grab shot here in Raw, I've got a bit of tidying up to do. Let's start with the composition because I kind of grabbed it and I didn't really get a chance to plan this through. But I think I can get rid of all of this at the bottom, all of this at the top, because that's the that's the interesting bit of the picture up there. And it makes a great panorama or letterbox format image. I think it looks a little bit underexposed, so I'll just tweak the exposure a tiny bit. So here in RAW, what I want to do is create my kind of quick and dirty black and white method. Then in Photoshop, I'll add in some color to these doors. So my quick and dirty black and white, take the saturation down to minus 100, take the contrast and push it to 70, 80, somewhere in that area. Because I like contrast, I'm going to add some clarity as well. That's not true. I'm adding clarity because I love clarity, and that's as good a reason as any in my book. I'm also going to take the, the shadows and increase the shadows and decrease the highlights. It was quite a flat lighting day. I'm going to add some drama to the lighting by putting some graduated filters in. So let's get the graduated filter. I'll turn it down about minus one stop, and I'll add a tight gradient just at the top and a much looser gradient at the bottom. By looser, I just mean that the line is longer, so it's less of a hard edge and more of a soft edge. Now, the whole purpose of this picture was to, to get somebody in the scene. Without, without somebody in the picture, it loses some of its drama. So I was really pleased when we got the cyclist in, which is why I had to grab it when I could. She's even looking at the camera, although she's giving me the usual, oh, you're holding a camera, you're a photographer face, and I get that a lot. So she's a bit dark. Let me get the adjustment brush and I'll increase the exposure and we'll just paint a little bit of light on her like that. That works better. Also, whilst I'm here, I can actually see there's a bit of noise in the shot. Not too much, but enough that I'm going to jump over to the detail tab and just use the noise reduction, about 20, just to remove the noise. Okay, so that's kind of where we want to be with the picture. Now I'm going to click on the open image button and we'll go into Photoshop CC. So the plan here is really simple. I'm going to change the color of each and every one of these doors. There are how many? There are 10 doors in total, so we need 10 different colors. But first, I need to select the doors. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool just to make a very quick and a bit rough selection as well. I didn't mean to go quite that, that rough. Now, when you're doing this, you're going to spend a lot more time getting a really neat, perfect selection. I'm going to be fairly quick because I'm going to show you the technique but not necessarily how you need to be bang on accurate with the selection. Just take it as red that you need the best selection that you can get to get the best end result. Okay, so let's just go down through here. And yeah, almost there. There we go. Two more to go. And last one. Okay, so there we go. So there is a, a pretty good selection, and that'll do for the purposes of demonstration. I am going to click on the refine edge, partly because it is such a rough selection, but also I want to soften the edges down. So I'll put a bit of smoothing feathering in here. So let's feather it up about two pixels. And that just takes away the hard, jagged edges. So we need a new layer. So onto the layers panel, find the new layer icon at the bottom. That adds a new layer at the top. And it's that layer that I'm going to add color to. But what colors? Well, at the moment, my foreground color is set to black. So I'll click on my foreground color. That brings up this usual color picker. And then I'm going to click and drag all the way out, top right corner. And that will go and select the reddest of reds. I actually don't want to paint that color. I want to use something more subtle. So I'll change the saturation of that color to 50. And that gives me a sort of a pastel red color. Click OK. Grab the paint brush and I'll paint in the first door like that. Now, I know it's a solid color. We'll, we'll blend it in in just a minute. So what about the next color? I want a nice even shift of colors across 10 doors. And that means I'm going to change just the hue value. So the lightness, uh, the saturation, and the brightness rather don't change. 10, I'm doing this in my head, about 35, I reckon. If I add 35 to the hue for each door, that should give me just enough color change, but without repeating any of the colors. 35, 35, that's 70. Okay, and 70 and 35. Now I can already see that there may be a little bit of an issue here. My math isn't that good. So this could be fun. 30, uh, it's gonna be 140, that's not so bad. 
and then the next one I can do is 175. And you think this is hard? You try doing this and talking at the same time. Oh, uh, 175, that's going to be uh, 210. Uh, yeah, that was a tough one. And then 245. And that gives us a purple color. And you can see how the colors are changing. Oh, come on, Gavin. 230, 280. Uh -huh. And then <laughs> one more. I'm going to stop talking and just do the maths. That is 315. Okay, there we go. Cool. Brilliant. So that's giving me a lovely rainbow color going through each one being an even uh, color distance from the previous door. So I'm happy with that, but how do we blend those colors in? Well, we did it on its own separate layer, which means we can now use layer blending modes and we can choose it now for the best effect. So normally something like multiply works pretty well. And yeah, that looks good. We could try overlay, which is quite a vivid uh, effect. Soft light tends to be a softer version. We could try something like um, color. That works well too. But let's go and use multiply. Multiply look good. I'll just drop the opacity down a wee bit. Finally, I'm going to add in a new adjustment layer and I'm going to add some brightness and contrast because having done all the work, got the colors in, now I can really judge whether I want to tweak the brightness and the contrast and I do a little bit. Okay, there you go. There is my completed Rainbow Beach Hut Doors picture finished. So there you go, 15 minute challenge over and done with. And isn't it typical, just as we finish, the sun starts to break through. But that's all part of the fun of photography. A 15 minute challenge is making the most of the location you're in, in just a very small period of time. Now, if you want to find out more about me and Adorama, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center where you can find out more information. For example, how to make the best use of the neutral density filter we used earlier on. Then the best thing to do if you want to find out more and keep up to date with Adorama TV is to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Howie, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.